is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking a president from spring to compensation follows. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Right now at midday, tragedy strikes. A mother and her son are found dead in their Sugarland home. The father also dead as friends and family try to figure out how something like this could happen. Grief counselors are now on hand at the son's school. Voters in New Hampshire have spoken. Bernie Sanders is the top choice in this year's primary, with Pete Buttigieg coming in second. The front runners who had a disappointing showing and the candidates who've since dropped out of the race. Here's a live look outside at the Southwest Freeway. Gray skies, chilly and wet. Meteorologist Britta Merwin with when we will see the return of some sunshine. Now to that heartbreaking story where a mother and her son were found dead inside of their Sugarland home. The father was found dead miles away in San Marcos. Uh, Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli joins us live here. He's been following the story all morning long. He's got the latest. Vincent, grief counselors are on hand at the child's school today. Sophia, good morning. That's right. And I've been in this neighborhood all day. Detectives just took down the crime scene tape, releasing the home as the community continues to mourn. Today, the halls of Campbell Elementary School feel empty. They're missing fifth grader Aaron Logan, who was found murdered alongside his mother, Diana Logan, in their Sugarland home. We're saddened and shocked, just like everyone else. The gloomy morning reflecting the mood as parents walk their children to school. The pain and emotion still very raw. I'm sure the whole campus will mourn today. And I t told my seven-year-old that, um, that her friend had passed away. I thought that was enough information that she needed. I didn't share the entire story because I felt like she was a little young for the details. The details authorities say the father, Richard Logan, died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in San Marcos. Officers went to a Sugarland home to notify his family. No one answered. They conducted a welfare check and discovered Diana and 11-year-old Aaron shot to death. Thoughts and prayers go out to the family, of course. Uh, you know, we're just optimistic in the in the midst of, you know, the negative situation, but we, you know, we we're just holding on and trusting God through it all. Richard was a missions pastor with River Point Church. Hi, my name is Richard Logan. He is also the founder of the nonprofit Attack Poverty. Now, he's at the center of this investigation. And authorities have not officially ruled this a double murder suicide. They're still in the process of gathering evidence in this death investigation. Reporting live in Sugarland, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Vince, thank you. The church where Richard Logan reportedly was a pastor sent out a statement that reads, quote, 
While we still don't know many details, we are so sad and shocked to learn of the tragedy involving the Logan family. We ask that everyone pray for the family and friends who are suffering during this time. We are currently looking for ways to support and help our community process this tragedy. Switching gears now, let's get a check on that um, forecast. Yeah, it Messy is star. damp out there. Oof. Messy and just downright dreary, Britta. Yeah, very gloomy. That's why I went with yellow today, right? <laughs> you got to find your own sunshine if it's not going to be out right. there. The good news is we will have sunshine tomorrow, hours away, but we got to get through the rest of the day. Uh, our thunderstorms and showers out to the west kind of got hung up for a little bit with a warm front down in the coastal counties, but now we're starting to see that movement and everything's filling in. So grab your umbrella. We'll see these scattered showers over the next three, four hours before we dry out. They aren't severe, but they're just enough to be very inconvenient and get in your way. So take it slow on our wet roads. You can see the scattered showers right within Harris County over the Loop and the Beltway, stretching up the North Freeway and the East Tex Freeway. All this is pushing out to the east. And then we have some thunderstorms over the Lake Livingston area. If you hear that rumble of thunder, make sure that you bring everybody inside and keep everyone safe. Temperature-wise, we're kind of divided here. So where we had the warm front earlier this morning, we were actually at 68 degrees. Now that's no longer part of the weather picture and we're starting to cool down at the coast. We've dropped about 10 degrees in Galveston, so you're even feeling the cooler air at the coast. And we're in the 40s off to the north and west. So as this cold front rolls through, we are going to continue to cool down. You're going to want a light jacket with you. We're not going to have much of a rebound. I think we will get back into the 60s behind that cold front if we see a little break of sunshine after the showers clear out. But that's a pretty optimistic look at the forecast. It's generally going to be cloudy and cool with those showers rolling through. So keep your jacket and your umbrella hand. Andy. Now we do have beautiful sunshine to talk about. So coming up next, Sophia, I'll let you know when it's going to be taking over. Over to you. Oh, cannot wait. Thank you. Remember, you can track these showers when you want. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store. A wild surprise woke up a family in Montgomery just after four o'clock this morning. Check it out. This wild hog was determined to get in the house. It was first spotted by the family's dogs who started barking uncontrollably. The aggressive animal then rammed into the family's garage door and broke it from the frame. Eventually, the man killed the hog. He says there are normally a lot of hogs in that area. The punishment phase is now underway for the man found guilty of killing an eight-year-old girl. A jury in Fort Bend County convicted Jacoby Payton of murder yesterday. He's charged in the death of DeMarie Atkins back in 2017. Atkins was asleep in the back seat of her mother's car when she was shot and killed after a wreck. Payton now faces five years to life in prison. China says the new numbers of coronavirus cases and deaths are lower than in previous days. Experts hope it means that the virus is being contained, but they warn that China may be underestimating the figures. NBC's Bill Neely reports from Hong Kong. The virus has a new official name, COVID-19, but it's still causing new deaths and new infections. In the last 24 hours, 97 people are reported to have died in China. That is lower than on previous days. And in the last 24 hours, just over 2,000 new infections. Again, that's the lowest daily rise for a week. So there are some signs of hope. Experts believe perhaps this virus has leveled off. It's plateaued. It's being contained in what is the world's biggest ever attempted quarantine in the core Hubei province, where nearly 60 million people are being in virtual lockdown. They're being quarantined there. But experts are also warning that it's a little early to declare victory over this virus. And there is real worry that China is severely underestimating the figures. Some experts say by as much as fourfold. Also, hospitals in China simply unable to cope, and they are turning away patients who are newly infected. The situation on board two cruise ships, one off Thailand and the other off Japan, no change there. So this virus certainly isn't beaten yet, though there are some faint signs of progress. Bill Neely, NBC News, Hong Kong. New at midday right now, we are learning more about Houston's PCP problem. The Houston Forensic Science Center says PCP is the number two drug in impaired drivers in the city. This is a live look 
At the news conference that's happening right now, officials are releasing the results of the research study conducted in our area. We will have much more from this research ahead in our later newscasts and on click2houston.com. Astros spring training will be starting with a look back at the 2017 season. Today, the team scheduled to meet with Astros owner Jim Crane to discuss strategy on how to move on from the sign-stealing scandal. Channel 2's Randy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach as pitchers and catchers report. Hey there, Randy. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Andy. How you doing? Welcome to West Palm Beach. Astros spring training. I'll go mention the weather's outstanding right now. Mid-80s. Plenty of sunshine. It will greet the players when they hit the field uh, for the first time tomorrow. That's the official opening day when it comes to workouts for pitchers and catchers. Today is uh, technically what they're calling the reporting day. By now, everybody, pitchers and catchers staff need to be here. Full squad workouts don't open until Monday. Let's roll some of the video. It's been a quiet morning here. They allowed the media on part of the property and soon will be asked to, to leave the property. Uh, full access coming up tomorrow when the players uh, will officially uh, talk with the media. Uh, it was slow arrivals this morning. Some cars came through, some staff members, including pitching coach uh, Brent Strom. Also, uh, infielder Ledmus Diaz made an appearance as well. I just saw Brad Peacock, a pitcher, uh, leaving and exiting the parking lot. Uh, all quiet today. The media is starting to roll in. There'll be a lot of media here, especially on the national side uh, tomorrow. And again, it all points to the Astros finally making their first comments since Major League Baseball came down uh, with their suspensions and, of course, the news regarding the sign-stealing scandal. So we will hear from the players for the first time tomorrow. No media access when it comes to interviews today. Uh, reportedly, owner Jim Crane has made his way, or at least making his way to West Palm Beach, wants to meet with the players to discuss the strategy on how they will uh, send their message back to the media regarding the sign stealing scandal that just recently came down in the past month or so. But again, we're here on the ground with the Astros. We'll check in again live at 5 and 6 o'clock today. Live in West Palm Beach at Astros Spring Training, Randy McAvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. We will see you then, Randy. Thanks so much. The suspect in the August shooting massacre at an El Paso Walmart expected to go before a judge. Coming up, what we expect to see today in the courtroom. Bernie Sanders out front taking the most votes in the New Hampshire primary. The surprises and where things go from here. Mattress Makers. New Hampshire goes down to the wire. Bernie Sanders comes out on top with Pete Buttigieg hot on his heels. And Amy Klobuchar with a surprising surge. NBC's Kristen Welker is in New Hampshire with the latest. Overnight in New Hampshire, Senator Bernie Sanders narrowly beating former South Bend Thank Mayor you, Pete Buttigieg. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. The self-proclaimed Democratic Socialist fueled by young and liberal voters calling for unity. No matter who wins, and we certainly hope it's going to be us, we are going to unite together and defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. Buttigieg casting himself as a moderate alternative to Sanders right. netted just as many delegates as the Vermont senator, giving him the overall delegate lead in the primary race so far. And thanks to you, a campaign that some said shouldn't be here at all has shown that we are here to stay. Yeah. One of the night's other big winners, Senator Amy Klobuchar, who took third place. She capitalized on the moment by reintroducing herself to the country. Hello, America. I'm Amy Klobuchar, and I will beat Donald Trump. And another major New Hampshire headline, the candidates who fell far behind, including longtime national frontrunner Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Both failed to get enough votes to earn any delegates. Before the race was called, Biden, who placed fifth, was on a plane to South Carolina, which will hold the nation's next primary. The former vice president stressing he's still in it because of his support among more diverse voters. You can't be the Democratic nominee and you can't win a general election as Democrat unless you have overwhelming support from black and brown voters. Warren's fourth place finish was also a blow to her campaign, but insisting she'll go on. Our campaign is built for the long haul. <laughs> 
and we are just getting started. Overshadowing all of it, President Trump, who coasted to victory in the Republican primary, his campaign calling the Democrats' race so far a dumpster fire. That was Kristen Welker reporting. The field is also thinning out this morning. Businessman Andrew Yang and Colorado Senator Michael Bennett both announcing they're suspending their campaigns. The suspect in the August shooting massacre at an El Paso Walmart is due in court today. Authorities say Patrick Crucius killed 22 people and injured nearly two dozen in that shooting rampage. It was one of the nation's deadliest mass shootings and the deadliest attack on Latinos in modern U.S. history. Crucius has been indicted on 90 federal charges, including hate crimes. He could get the death penalty if convicted. A fire at an ExxonMobil refinery in Baton Rouge has been extinguished. Take a look at those flames there. The company's volunteer fire team quickly put them out. No one was hurt. So far, testing has shown no impact to air quality there. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Meteorologist Britta Merwin joining us now. You know something? We've got all the sunshine we need right oh, here. <laughs> you're so sweet, Andy. Uh, at least tomorrow we'll have the legit you know, actual Yay. sun shining in the sky. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful to see it until we get to that point. Yeah, you got to find your internal sunshine. Yes. Right? Yeah. We'll all get there. Uh, it's also very cloudy and cool out there. Uh, scattered showers across the area. So grab a jacket and your umbrella dress in a few layers. Uh, the good news is that we do have that sunshine in the forecast. But let's get you through another gloomy afternoon. Uh, this is a live look over downtown where we're in the mid 50s. We're also in the mid 50s on the southwest side and 58 degrees in Galveston. You we've actually cooled down by about 10 10 degrees in Galveston compared to this morning as that cool air and that north wind is starting to work its way through. Uh, we're in the 40s off to the north and west. We're going to continue to cool off these temperatures as the cold front's rolling through and then hopefully we can have a little bit of a slight rebound late this afternoon and we start to clear things up. But generally speaking, it's going to feel cool to you. Do not forget your jacket. Here's a look at that cold front pushing on through. Uh, showers and thunderstorms that are pushing in from the west, they will continue to move into our east counties over the next several hours. Nothing's severe, but definitely inconvenient. You're going to see some wet pavement across town and you might also hear a rumble of thunder. Just tracking some scattered showers in Fort Bend County right now. These showers that are leaving Sealy, they're going to be pushing into Katy over the next 45 minutes. So Katy, it's dry right now, but you have rain on the way. Meanwhile, where we have had a little bit of thunder and lightning is up to the northeast. Livingston, Goodrich moving into Shepherd. That's where we've heard those rumbles of thunder. So if you do hear that, make sure you bring everyone inside. Keep them nice and safe. Late this afternoon, after that cold front rolls through, through. We're in the 50s right now. We might be able to get back up into the low 60s. It's all about that minute timing and exactly where you live. But it's going to feel cool to you no matter what. So as I said, keep your jacket on. Uh, the real clearing is out to the north and west, and we will finally tap into that as we go into our forecast tonight. So in our future cast model, you see the showers moving through. For after school pickup, I would still recommend to bring an umbrella because we might have some lingering showers. But generally speaking, we're starting our dry out by the time we get to 3 p.m. That's when we could see a little rebound back to the low 60s. Uh, we'll keep it mainly dry for the evening drive. I know you see a little bit popping up on our future cast model, but what I'm seeing on radar is indicating that once the front is through, I think we're going to have a nice drying trend and we're expecting dry conditions for tonight. Only going to pick up maybe a quarter of an inch of rainfall from this point on. So again, it's not overly heavy rain. If you do have a thunderstorm like what we've seen near Lake Livingston, maybe a quick half an inch of rainfall would be possible. Now, although we're getting rid of the gloomy skies, and the rain. We're not getting rid of the cool air. I mean, it's going to be chilly and breezy tomorrow. We're waking up in the 40s, only 58 degrees. These are winter temperatures, but we'll have sunshine. It's going to make you feel better, right? And then we have a beautiful Valentine's Day forecast. A cold morning and the afternoon will be cool at 60 degrees, but we're heading into our holiday weekend with some nice cool weather and sunny skies. All right, Britta, thanks so Thank much. You, Britta. Stay with us. We're coming right back. In this morning's consumer news, something you won't want to hear if you're planning a vacation. A trip to Disney theme park is going to cost you more this year. Yeah, the increases for both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Annual passes have increased between 4 and 8 percent, depending on which plan you purchase. This follows a more than 10 percent 
ticket price hike in 2019. The higher ticket prices come as Disney California Adventure prepares to open its Marvel Avengers campus. Uber Pets is now up and running in Houston. We also checked into a post on social media that states you could get some money from the Astros cheating scandal. Consumer expert Amy Davis joins us now with what she found. You may have noticed posts on social media claiming you can get paid because of that Astros cheating scandal. Well, we did some checking and discovered it's legit. The law firm Hilliard, Martinez & Gonzalez, based in Corpus Christi, has taken out several ads. They look like these on Facebook and Instagram, and they're trying to get Astros season ticket holders to sign up for what could be a class action lawsuit. The firm has set up a website to gather information from potential clients. They're looking for 2017 and 2018 season tickets ticket holders. When you click through their site, it takes you to a professional employment agreement that you can sign digitally. If you do that, you are hiring this firm to represent you and you're agreeing that their payment will come out of any compensation that they get for you. When I called, an intake employee told me that no suit has been filed yet, but if it is filed, they will try to collect what fans paid for tickets and travel to and from the games. Well, Uber Pets is now in Houston. The ride sharing service will now let you book a ride with a driver who will allow your four-legged friend to come along. Uber Pets will cost you a little more than a regular Uber ride. And if your pet leaves ex waste, excessive hair, or damages the vehicle, you'll also be charged a cleaning fee. That's why Uber suggests that you bring a blanket or a towel for Fido or Garfield to cover the seat. In the app, if you want to do Uber Pets, just under choose a ride, select Uber Pet. The numbers for job openings aren't looking so great right now. They tumbled again in December to their lowest level in two years. With unemployment remaining around a 50-year low, the labor market tightened again as 2019 came to a close. Total vacancies are now at 6.4 million, down from nearly 6.8 million in November. A decline in demand from several industries over the past several months has closed that gap. And industry experts say it could be sending a signal that the job market is about to peak. I'm consumer expert Amy Davis, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Ahead on Channel 2 News at Midday, going in depth. Channel 2 investigates where toxic waste from another state is being stored and why some folks are worried about it. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. Doctors say more children are suffering from kidney stones. Find out why and the two hospitals in our area increasing their resources just to help these kids. Coming up. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Andy and Sophia back with you on this Wednesday. Boy, we really need some sunshine around oh, we here, We need don't it we? so bad. What a oh, start to the morning and your morning commute. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Driving in this morning, I was like, yeah. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> right? Totally. I didn't do it as good as Jimmy does, but still, you get the idea. It was rough is a great way to put it, too, Andy. A little rough out there, so you got to just be careful. Otherwise, uh, the temperatures have really held steady for much of the morning. We've been sitting in the mid-50s. you got low 50s as you get out towards Katy. And not much change out there. A couple of upper 40s sprinkled as well, as you might expect, over towards the Brazos, Bryan College Station, for example, and touch warmer than that as you get down towards the coast. Not much change out there, although we are finally starting to see this front move. It got a little stuck for a few hours this morning once that warm front moved in. But now, uh, as you jump a little tighter, you can see a few lightning strikes with that, too. So a couple of thunderstorms out there from Livingston, crossing westward over to Huntsville, out to Navasota Prairie View. As you get in towards uh, western Montgomery County, just watch out. Fast-moving storms that will move on through. Nothing heavy, nothing severe, but it is out there. And kind of take a bird's-eye view. There's the low itself now starting to cross in towards southeastern Kansas and a real good snowstorm starting to pile up. And this is going to be some trouble, not only for folks there, but look at all this. We've got wind chill warnings, blizzard warnings as you get up into the the Dakotas, winter weather advisories that stretch all the way in towards Chicago and up into Ohio, and of course the flash flood watches that are out as well. So lots of changes coming if you're traveling. Those are going to be the trouble spots. We are looking for some sunshine as we finally move all this rain out of here. I'll let you know when we finally start to see that coming up here in just a bit. Sophia? All right. Thank you, Justin. Remember, you can track these showers anytime you want. All you have to do is download Frank's free forecast weather app. Just search KPRC in your Apple or Android app store. Here's a look at some of the mornings big stories. Sugarland police are still investigating the death of a woman and child. The two were found dead with gunshot wounds in their home on Evening Light Drive. The woman's husband was found dead in Guadalupe County. Investigators say he died from what looks like a self-inflicted gunshot wound. They believe the woman and child were dead for several hours. 
New numbers of coronavirus cases and deaths are lower than in previous days. Experts hope it means that quarantine measures are working. But they warn that China may not be accurately reporting new cases. Just yesterday, the World Health Organization officially named the virus COVID-19. Passengers are still stuck on two cruise ships near Thailand and Japan. New developments in the case of Jesse Smollett, a new indictment against the actor accused of lying to police about a hate crime attack. NBC's Ron Allen has the details. Jesse Smollett faces a new six count indictment, charging he filed four separate false reports to Chicago police when he claimed last January that two masked gunmen attacked him, insulted him with homophobic and racist slurs, and looped a noose around his neck. The grand jury's investigation saying Smollett planned and participated in a staged hate crime attack. A special prosecutor saying a new investigation launched after similar charges were abruptly dropped last year revealed Smollett reported a heinous hate crime that he in fact knew had not occurred. Smollett always has proclaimed his innocence. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. Police and the city's mayor then outraged when the first 16 count indictment was dismissed. This is without a doubt a whitewash of justice and sends a me clear message that if you're in a position of influence and power, you'll get treated one way, other people will be treated another way. The authorities said prosecuting Smollett is in the interest of justice and because police expended so many resources to investigate the false reports. Attorneys for Smollett have not responded to new charges. The actor and the city already locked in a bitter civil lawsuit. Ron Allen, NBC News, Chicago. To Decision 2020 and the results from the nation's first Democratic presidential primary. Senator Bernie Sanders came out on top with Pete Buttigieg close behind. Amy Klobuchar came in third place. Meanwhile, businessman Andrew Yang and Senator Michael Bennett announcing that Tuesday night in New Hampshire was their last stop on the campaign trail. Spring training will be starting with a look back at the 2017 season. Today, the Astros will reportedly meet as a team to discuss strategy on how to move on from the sign-stealing scandal. It was a day that pitchers and catchers were supposed to be reporting to spring training. Channel 2's Randy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach to cover every development. You can look for his live reports later today on air and on our website. Click to Houston.com. Well, it's chemical waste so toxic, the state of North Carolina told the company that makes it to ship it somewhere else. Now that waste is being shipped right here to Texas. Channel 2 investigator Joel Eisenbaum shows you where and why there are so many concerns about it. In picturesque North Carolina, along the seemingly pristine Cape Fear River, they came back and said that mine was one of the wells that is contaminated. A chemical company called Chemmores was caught red-handed discharging an industrial byproduct known to cause cancer in animals. It showed up in the drinking water. And it showed up in the press. Lots of coverage. I have two dogs that I'm concerned about with the cancer. Lots of outrage. Even a congressional hearing. Chemmores felt really bad about it. We're working side by side with the state of North Carolina in partnership to make sure we have the very best information available for the public. Well, you're the public, but I bet you didn't know the brilliant plan to fix that messy Carolina problem. Ready? Just ship that to Texas and bury it thousands of feet under Deer Park. Sound good to you, Aaron Brockovich? Well, that can be problems as well. I mean, um, tanks deteriorate, bottoms rust. Um, they break open, we don't know it, and we just end up with another massive groundwater contamination. You've probably already guessed that the federal government says it's not a good idea to drink this stuff. This stuff being an industrial chemical called Gen X. That's a weird name, right? Anyway, it's used to make all sorts of products we use every day, including nonstick cookware, paint, and cleaning products. The problem is there's a lot we don't know about Gen X, like nobody's quite sure if it causes cancer in humans. Let's hope not, given this hazmat spill of Gen X on its way to Texas. Oh yeah, Coal City Cobb Transportation has multiple violations. Channel 2 Investigates found that on two occasions, TxDOT inspectors ordered their trucks out of service. Those rigs were carrying Gen X to Deer Park. 
These trucks have been rolling through since 2017. If you live within a few miles of this place, you're worried, right? Yeah, just add it to the list. Oh no, quiet resignation, that'll never do. I know, let's try to drive into the plant. I mean, Texas Molecular, the folks who shoot this stuff underground, wouldn't answer our initial interview request, and heck, we're go-getters. Yes, sir. Uh, we work for uh, Channel 2. We've been trying to get in touch with company representatives. Yes, sir. I can, uh, uh, I can get your name and your phone number, we can, and I can uh, have the uh, email it to them. That way they can contact you. Oh, well, we've been trying to contact you. Okay. okay. Yeah, we never got in. But we did get an email telling us they don't want to talk to us, so that's something, right? This line is worth examining, too, mentioning government oversight. That's true. And Texas Molecular, a company that specializes in deep well injection of waste material, is operating within their permit guidelines. Thumbs down from Brockovich, though. I don't think that's the solution. Thousands of gallons of Gen X continue to quite literally pour into Deer Park. There's no need for a public hearing, no need for your input. This is a done deal. North Carolina dealt it to us. Did we mention they weren't the only ones with a Gen X problem? Uh, like West Virginia had the same problem up in West Virginia. We could be still looking at 20 years down the road, people coming up with things. We don't know. On click2houston.com right now, we've got the timeline of how this stuff managed to make its way to Texas, plus revealing internal email between this chemical company and the EPA. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Former NBA star Dwayne Wade is getting a lot of praise today for his parenting skills. Coming up, what he is saying about his 12-year-old daughter Zaya's journey to come out as transgender. But first, here's a live look at what's happening on Wall Street as we head into break. Wednesday morning means it is time for KPRC and Texas mattress makers to surprise another deserving high school senior with $2,500 for college. Yeah, this week's recipient lost his father to illness in 2014 and faced another challenge when his mom suffered a stroke two years ago. But he's remained strong for her and himself and has worked extremely hard to excel through high school. He is National Honor Society president. He served in student body government and get this, has competed in both varsity football and track. Rachel Gordon from Texas Mattress Makers and Tania Wright had the honor of surprising this week's senior scholar. We're here at Klein High School to surprise a standout student. This senior is a great example of all five Klein core values, especially perseverance. Let's go. How are you? Hello. We have a very deserving senior in here, Mr. Ryan McDonald. Where are you, sir? You are the recipient of this scholarship for $2,500 for college. Congratulations. Congratulations. Come up here. So how do you feel? Uh, amazed and very thankful. <laughs> very thankful. So you've been through a lot. How does it feel to just be, you know, kind of rewarded with something so unexpected? It's a, truly a blessing, and I couldn't be more thankful to have had an amazing family surrounding me and friends to help me get through the hard times. And you've balanced school. You're a wonderful student and all the extracurricular activities. I'm as hectic as it may seem, it just I just take a step back and try to remain patient and it gets me through it all. Where do you want to go to school? As of right now, I'm undecided. In state, I'm thinking about a or UT. I've been accepted into both of those. Well, well congratulations Thank again. You. you deserve this so much. I'm Ryan McDonald, and I'm a KPRC Texas Mattress Maker Scholarship winner. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so, so sweet. Well, Ryan says that he plans to study communications and business. He's also applied to some schools out of state, so we look forward to hearing where he lands. We're sure he'll be successful at any school he chooses. Congratulations again to Ryan, his proud mom, and Klein High School. Of course, all of the students considered for the KPRC Texas Mattress Maker Scholarship have been nominated by their high schools. You can see today's first surprise again and keep up with our winners throughout the semester by logging on to clicktohouston.com slash scholarships. All right, in this morning's entertainment news, nine years after Friday, put 13-year-old Rebecca Black in the spotlight, the singer is now addressing the massive, painful backlash to that song. Remember that song, Friday, Friday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can't forget it, right? Well, she posted on Twitter, I just wish I could go back and talk to my 13-year-old self who was terribly ashamed of herself and afraid of the world. Aw. Black writes that growing up, she felt depressed and alone, and producers said they'd never work with her, but she's now writing and releasing her own music and being kinder to herself, posting every day is a new opportunity to shift your reality and lift your spirits. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, a big Oscars bump for Parasite. The movie website Fandango says the day after the Korean film made history, winning Best Picture and three other Academy Awards, ticket sales jumped 443% over a week earlier. Parasite is the first non-English film to win the Best Picture Oscar. A satirical thriller laced with over-the-top violence will get its second chance in movie theaters. Universal Pictures released a new trailer for The Hunt, and the film is now set for release on March 13th. The movie was originally scheduled to come out last fall, but it was put on hold following a string of mass shootings in Texas, California, and Ohio. The storyline depicts what's been dubbed as liberal elites kidnapping and killing people they call deplorables for sport. Acting can do much more than make you famous. For one well-known actress, it can help with a speech impediment. Actress Emily Blunt says she used to stutter and that it was so bad she couldn't even say her name when she was young. She yeah. told the magazine Marie Claire that the problem started when she was six or seven and got progressively worse. Blunt says she took up acting while she was still in grade school, and that helped her. A poodle is top dog at the 144th annual Westminster Dog Show. This was the scene inside New York's Madison Square Garden last night, and this is Seba. <laughs> She's a standard poodle from the non-sporting group. Seba is the fifth standard poodle to win top dog at Westminster, but the first since 1991. Congratulations. Oh, long, flowy hair. Gorgeous, I love right? Love it. So pretty. Very well groomed. And <laughs> a force to be reckoned They're, with. They all apparently. look so good. How yeah, do they, they make really the do. choice? You do such a wonderful <laughs> I job. I don't know. I, but don't know. I will say what I said yesterday. Go rent Best in Show. Yes. <laughs> yes. It will answer all of your questions. <laughs> if not, it will leave you in stitches because yeah. that's a very funny movie. <laughs> all right, guys, we're trying to get this rain out of here this afternoon. Yeah. You know, kind of ew and yes. just bleh, yeah. And yeah, all of that. So I promise we will see some sunshine. It will likely take till tomorrow. We may get a sliver, a whisk of it late this afternoon, but I don't think it'll be much. It's mainly tomorrow and Friday where we've got much better looking forecast. So let's head outside and show you what we've got. Uh, still a little gloomy as you get out across southwest Houston here, but notice that unlike yesterday when we were dealing with the fog, and I mean it was thick in many spots, today that's not been the case as the winds of switch are starting to pick up with some steam. We're also getting some drier air in here, and I know it doesn't feel like it, but it is dropping the dew points just a bit, and that'll continue through the rest of the night, and that is what will event, or through the rest of the day, I should say, and into the night. And that's what it eventually helped. Now, we're not going to move much with the temperatures today. They're going to stay basically where they are. 58 as you get down towards Galveston right now. Uh, northwest winds at around 14 miles an hour. And the humidity is still fairly elevated. But even down on the islanders to get ready for Mardi Gras to kick off on Friday and into the parades this weekend. Much better looking weather for that. So 50 in the Huntsville. We've got 55 out in Katy. Double nickels down in Sugar Land as well. And 58 as you get on the island. A little cooler in that moving up towards Bryan College Station. They're sitting just under 50 degrees. So the wind out of the north Northwest is going to bring in some of that drier air and eventually it's helping to push all of this rain out of the forecast as well. I've seen a couple of quick lightning strikes moving up towards Polk County and that's about it. 
for the most part, it's mainly just been the line itself moving through. So we are going to continue to watch all this slide northward and all this heavy looking snow as it moves its way up and towards uh, portions of the Great Lakes too. That is going to be some trouble. They've got winter weather advisories set up. As you get up into the Dakotas, they're talking about blizzard warnings on the backside of where that storm is going to be and the wind chill warnings as well. They could be talking about wind chills upwards of, or I should say, as low as maybe 15, 20 below zero. So that's pretty nasty uh, for this time of year. So we are actually going to see the temperatures hold into the 50s for much of the afternoon. I think by the time we get to about 2, 3 o'clock, maybe a couple of quick sprinkles as the back half of the system slides on through, and then it's done after that. Notice back in behind, we actually start to get the skies to clear just a bit. So I'm going to go partly cloudy as we get into the overnight hours. Notice as we start tomorrow morning, the temperatures will all begin anywhere from the mid to upper 40s, a little cooler and that as you get on the north side, touch warmer into the low 50s as you head on down towards the coast. Then tomorrow afternoon should see some decent sunshine, but it won't warm up much. Pretty strong north wind is going to keep us in the upper 50s and may see a spot try to get near 60, but that's about it. And we're actually going to lock that in for the next couple of days. High pressure for both Thursday and Friday will keep the sunshine around, but eventually that slowly starts to shift off to the east as it does. We'll start to see the next front get a little closer to us, and then just a slight chance you could get maybe a quick passing shower working away down towards the far southeast coastline, Chambers County, for example. But for the most part, we're going to keep a dry through our weekend forecast. So looking good for not only Mardi Gras for the uh, funky Uptown Umbrella Brigade. I think I'm saying that right. And then, of course, the parades on Saturday, Sunday, Roughnecks in town as well. And then as we get into next week, a little warmer. And then notice we got another front midweek. And that clears things out and cools down once again. Yeah, I love this time of year, don't That's you? That's not bad. That's right. We'll a take it. Happen. I like it. Yeah, we got a lot going on. Justin, thanks so much. Yep. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Welcome back now to the deeply personal revelation by former NBA superstar Dwayne Wade about his 12-year-old daughter. Here's Katie Beck. Retired NBA star Dwayne Wade making headlines off the court, sharing a personal story with Ellen DeGeneres about his 12-year-old daughter Zaya's journey to come out as transgender. Zion born um, as a boy, came home and said, hey, I think going forward, I'm ready to live my truth and I want to be uh, referenced as she and her. Uh, I would love for you guys to call me Zaya. Wade says he and wife Gabrielle Union listened and then learned from every resource available. We are proud parents um, of a child in the LGBTQ plus uh, community. Tuesday, Union posted a video on Instagram introducing Zaya, encouraging transgender youth to be themselves. I know it can get tough, definitely. Yeah, I, but I think you push through and you be the best you. Parental support crucial. A recent study shows LGBTQ youth who report having at least one accepting adult were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt in the past year. This is such a teaching moment. Jody Patterson is the mother of a transgender child and advocate for transgender rights. The first thing I tell parents is just take a deep breath and listen. Really immerse yourself in the world that your child is in so that you can be in the same world. An emotional journey for parent and child. Katie Beck, NBC News. Newly released video from a school bus crash is sparking a move for change. The call for safer school buses across the country.